Hey, hon. What are you working on there? Yet another blanket. Another blanket? Yes. Well, that's not Eagle's colors. I thought you were making me my Eagle blanket. Who gets a blanket before me? And The individual who this one belongs to, he knows about it. Yeah. Because I was just talking to him about it. So I wanted to make sure I had great colors. After I had already started it. You started that one a while ago, right? Uh, yeah, but then... Because I, I only started this one because I ran out of Emma stuff. Who, uh, who's that one belong to? It belongs to a dear friend of mine. So you got dear friends out there, huh? Yes, I do. And no, everyone, it's not Jeff. <laughs> CMC. It's Ed. <laughs> Ed, 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 Ed. From CMC. Lucky and then me. after I'm done this one, I'll do Reagan's. And yeah. after I'm done Reagan's, I'll do my mom's. After I'm done my mom's, I'll do Kelsey's. And after Kelsey's comes Uper's wife. Yeah. Then after that one comes. And I have an order. I just I'm and I got an order for a mermaid tail, but that one's not. They don't need that until January, so I'm good with that one. And when does my blanket come in here? You already got one. You have it packed away in the closet because it's too heavy. You said. Do I need to make you another one? No, I'm good. I'm good. I understand. I'm not Ed. I'm not, uh... I don't know. It's okay. Anyway, welcome to vlog 257. But Ed is going to have a special twist to it that he doesn't know about. Uh-oh. And I can't tell you. Is there going to be a spider in it or something? He's scared oh, of spiders. no, I won't do that. I'm not... I'm not Ed! <laughs> 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 when he opens up the box, there's not going to be a spider and a scorpion hidden no. under crap. Ah. Welcome to vlog 257. You say that with hesitation in your voice. No, it's 257. I know it's 257. Peace out. Something I haven't put in here in a while is the train. And it's a long one. It's been going for a while already. And still got a ways to go. I still say ours are better than Uper's trains. Trains. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace out. I'll be back. Okay, everybody. This is my mail. 100% Het for Clown. And uh, he's looking really good. He's getting big. So I think we're going to get a weight on him here. Let me turn this on. Let me set this up over here so we can get a good weight on him. Hold on. Oh, 344. Now I just, maybe next year I could breed them. I'll get a female big enough to breed them with. And you never know. Get some clowns. Wouldn't that be cool? Yes, it would be. So. Um, yeah, had to clean his cage, he messed it up, and just remember what I always say, the, uh, animal didn't ask for you to care for him, you asked to care for the animal, so, yep, that's a good look at him. I got a couple more to do real quick, and I'll get them out so you guys can see them too when I got them out, we'll get some weights on them guys, huh? Alright, hold on. And here is the orange ghost that I got from um, Edit CMC Reptiles. I just love how the hypogene just 
you know, and you know, most people say Orange Ghost or, you know, it technically is a hype bowl. But uh, anyway, um, what I mean to say here, ah, I got a question the other day. Somebody asked, why do I keep them in such small little tubs? Now, with ball pythons, unlike your king snakes and stuff like that, if you want it to problem feeder, smaller tub, they eat better. I find, this is, you know, this is just 33 years of experience I've been doing this. I find, um, even if you have a hide, sometimes it don't work if it's a bigger tub. Smaller tubs will keep them growing fast. I understand they grow out of the tubs pretty quick. But, they do eat a lot better in smaller tubs. And then you just move them up to the next tub and so on and so forth. Until they're breeding size and then it's, you know. But, uh, yeah, if you have a problem feeder, put it in a smaller tub. A lot of times smaller tubs will work. That even goes for, you know, sometimes colubrids. Uh... Corn snakes will sometimes go off feed, and uh, king snakes. Smaller tubs seem to work in a good, nice hide. I find if you got a hide, that when a snake is in it, it can touch itself. It touches itself all the way around. That makes a difference. If it's too big of a hide, they won't eat. But if you put a small enough hide in there, to where when a snake curls in it, it's touching, it's touching the sides of the um, the hide. That's better than too big of a hide. It's a psychological thing, I think. I don't understand it, but that's what they do. Not a lot of people don't know that, but and a lot of people won't tell you that. But yes, if you have a corn snake or a king snake that's not eaten, you put it, get a smaller hide, and then when it crawls in the hide, you see how this girl's curled up? They'll curl up really tight and be touching the sides all the way around. It makes a difference. So, all right, guys. Peace out. I'll be back. We're going to check a bunch of other stuff. And here's one of my banana males. This is a banana male. 50% het for hide. 522. This guy is just... Look at him. His colors... I know his colors ain't showing up on the, the camera the way I was hoping they would. But man, he is so bright orange. All right, guys, we'll go check something else out. I don't know if you guys can read that or not, but that says 980 for my het pod girl right here. Won't be long. She's got to, you know, try to double her in size and see if we can get her to breed maybe, maybe next year. That'll be amazing. So... Because once she's up to size, man, woohoo, things are different there. I'm changing her out. She ain't even going to go back in her other tub. I'm putting her in a totally different tub now, in a big, big breeder tub over there. So, get some weight on her. Let me see where her head at. Because she's a biter. Let's see if I can get her, see if we can get her face in here, see if we can get her on here. She's a snappy one for some reason. Why is she snappy? I don't know. But she is. She's packing on the food, packing on the weight. She's got to get a lot bigger than what she is though before I would breed her. She's kind of big, but she's, on the other hand, she's uh, long and lanky. And, you know, I like to have a little bit of girth on them. She's beautiful, I do know that. All right guys, I'll be back. And this is the pastel yellow belly. I'm waiting for her to shed. She just was in a shed cycle. Uh, her eyes just started clearing up, so they were really blue the other day. So this pastel yellow belly is just breathtaking. I got this from Marshall Law Morphs. And I got a granite yellow belly down here from him also. And I hope to produce some ivories when she gets big enough, which will be 
awesome. So, and she's 143 grams. And trust me, guys, she doesn't miss a meal. Ah, do you guys want to see the granite yellow belly? All right, hold on. Ah, pause, camera, pause. And this, needless to say, is the granite yellow belly. He's at 162 grams also, but this is the male. And let me tell you, these yellow bellies are beautiful. So, leave a comment down below what you guys think. I think today's kind of a ball python day. Ball python day. So, let me see. What else do I got over here I can show you guys? It's pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know. My call it quits for today uh, because you know short vlog. My vlogs don't all have to be really long. Um, maybe you guys want to go look at a couple geckos. Yeah, we'll go over and look at a couple geckos before I call it quits, huh? And here we are, looking at a few geckos. We will do it. Look at this one here. I still just love these guys. These two are two of my favorites. Just two of my favorites. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love all of Becky's geckos. But, uh... There's a few that stick out to me that I really, really like. There are a few. I put the pied, the head pied girl, in there. If you can see her in there, I'll try to pull it out. She's really testy. There she is. So, try to bump her up for next year, maybe. I don't know how much, I'm not going to overfeed her or nothing. There's a lot of people that will do that, like power feed and stuff. like. I don't believe in none of that because, you know, what, what you end up doing if you power feed an animal like a ball python or something, you end up, they end up getting up to weight, but it's not a healthy weight. It's a, like an obese weight. Um, like me, fat. That's what happens. They end up getting fat. And... Being fat does not help reproduction in any way. You can get the animal up to weight in time. Does it mean that you're going to have good large clutches or anything? No. Nope. What it's telling me is, is that your animal's up to size. It's just not ready yet. Um, some people think it has to do with age. I'm still up in the air about that. I'm not going to say 100% it has to do with age. But I'm sure the older the animal is... Before you breed it, the better off you are. Because I really do believe, you know, three years old, two and a half years old, two years old, three years old. You let them get that size, it gives their body time to catch up. And it doesn't put stress on the animal when they're older. Because all you're doing is shortening the animal's lifespan, really. That's just, this is all my opinion, experiences, you know, I've been doing this a long time and that's you know i don't i hate keep saying that but uh yeah it's uh very interesting how some people think of doing things and other people take what they do things so what what i've learned is you take what person a says what person b says and person c says 
you put it together, you kind of look for similarities and you come up with your own little niche. Because what person A says may not work for you. But what person C says might work for you. Person B might have a little bit that helps you. But if you put it together and come up with your own plan and your own ideas, it works best. Because I guarantee you I do things different than most people do. And I have great success. You know? Um, I have yet to have an animal that, uh, a reptile, I should say, or even fish that I have not successfully bred. And, it, you know, people say like the discus fish, good example, discus fish. You'll never be able to breed discus fish. You'll never be able to do it. You got to have all this perfect. You got to have this right, that right, this right, that right. And guess what? I was successful. I bred them. I did it just to prove a point. I did it in less than a year, too. Most people say they got to be this size and this age and all this. And boom, I did it. Yep. Yes, I have. You can go look back at some of my videos of the, of the spawning and the fries and stuff. Yep, I did it. Mm-hmm. Same with reptiles. If you put your own, if you look at the animal, do a little research on the animal, see where it comes from. You can put this stuff all together yourself and be successful. I mean, there's even wiggle room in temperatures. People say it has to be this and it has to be that and it has to be this. Other people say it has to be this, has to be that, has to be this. And you have to have this and you have to have that. And what I find is if you put your own little plan together, it'll come together. Some people swear you have to have belly heat for for uh, uh, ball pythons because they have to have a spot to sit on and bask on and all this. Well, I know a few breeders that are extremely successful breeding, and they just do ambient heat temperature. They just heat the room to a certain temperature. If they have to have the belly heat, and people think if they eat something and it sits in their stomach... And they don't have a hot spot to lay on or a basking spot or a heat, belly heat. The, 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 like a snake. Let's take a ball python, for instance, here. A ball python eats a rat. Boom. People say, if that ball python, some people say, doesn't have a hot spot to lay on and relax, it will sit in its stomach, get it sick, it'll regurgitate, and it won't be eating right. And then it puts too much stress on the animal. Well, then I got breeders that are breeding, don't have hot spots like that, just ambient room temperature. They feed their animals, doesn't stress the animal out any, just to have a room temperature. And they're very successful at what they do. So I, I think a lot of this stuff has to be reconfigured, rethought out, and replanned. You got all these older people, like myself included, who were set in one way, but over time have realized other ways work good. So we need to, if you have a question about something, by all means, hit me up. I'll answer my question the best I can. And if I don't know the answer, I've been around long enough to know somebody that knows the answer. All right. So yeah, there's a lot of things that people do differently. Than other people and I've been very successful at what I do I've never had a issue with breeding anything I don't know why I just got like what they call the how did my mother put it and my wife like they, they had a name they, they used to call me something because even my friends always said well you get something you get an opposite one of it and you put them together you always were successful with it have been since I was a kid I don't know it's just all Patience. Um, it's all patience and do your, re do your research and get places. Sorry about that cutting out. Obviously, the video is too long. So now I'm going to move on and say peace out. Good night. Hang in there, everybody. And uh, we're all good. Peace out.